In this tutorial, we're going to start our exploration of the node module system. Whether you want it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, when you're working on node, you are using the node module system. The way it works in node is that every JavaScript file is a module in and of itself. So pure, when I have first.js, guess what? That's a module. Now you can leverage the power of modules to do stuff that you want to be done based on modules, but then you don't have to be aware of it when you're working on a single file. We wrote some JavaScript commands on a single file and we executed it and we didn't have to care about modules. But let's level up the complexity of this very, very naive and basic program right now. And we will gradually get into the world of modules and go from there, all right? So let's say, uh, I'm gonna actually clear this out. And let's say I wanna create a program which adds numbers. Uh, a function here, add, which takes in two numbers, and then it returns a plus b, all right? And then let's say I have um, a function greet, which prints to the console a simple greeting. And now I want to call greet with, let's actually make this with an argument, right? This is going to take in a name as an argument. And then here I'm going to append name to this. Could use the backtick string, but I'm not going to do that for now. Um, so I'm going to call greet with my name so that it greets me. And then I'm going to do a console.log of one and two, which should return three. And now I'm going to execute this. Okay, this is great. But now let's say I want to split this into multiple files. All right, so what I can do is create a new file. I'm going to call this add.js and I'm going to take this addition function out, cut and paste it here. And then of course I can take the, I should add it, I didn't do that. So add of one comma two would have given me three, but oh well. I'm gonna put this over here, add of one comma two, and then first is gonna do the greet part. Okay, so I have two files. I can execute first, which is gonna give me the greeting, and I can also execute add.js, which is going to give me three, which is the sum of one and two. Now, what if I want to call the add function from here, all right? And what if I want to call this add.js script to be executed from here? I want to print this, and I also, I want this greet function to be called. I want to execute both with a single command. Let's say my requirement is when I do node first.js, I want the add.js to be executed, and then the contents of first.js to be executed. How would I do that? The way to do this is by using a specific function called require, right? So the term is require, and then here I give it the name of the file. Here it is add.js. Now add.js, is in the same directory as first.js. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a dot slash to let it know that it has to look it up in the same directory, all right? Now if I were to execute this, notice what happens. It's executed add.js, which is basically similar to what would happen if I were to do this, add.js, and now it's executed the rest of first.js, okay? So require is a way for you to import a module. Like I said, each JavaScript file in Node 
is its own module. So add.js is its own module. First.js is its own module. So in order to execute one JavaScript file from another JavaScript file, this JavaScript file has to require the one that needs to be executed. Okay, and the way to require it is by specifying a relative path. Relative path is one of the ways. There are other ways which we'll cover later. But let's say you have two files. You require one file from the other using a relative path. And what the JavaScript interpreter is going to do is it's going to actually execute the one that's being required when that required function is called. And then it's going to execute the rest, right? So this is pretty much the same as you running node add.js in the command line. Now, if I were to move this to the bottom here, and now if I were to run node first.js, you notice the order is flipped. So it's basically this line require of a file name, which is basically executing that file. All right. Now, if this is what's happening, let's say I put this back over here, all right? This is executing the file, which is add.js. If you notice here, add.js has this function called add. Now, can I use that function in this original file, which is importing it, which is requiring it? Okay, so let's say I do, I do add of uh, 10, 20. This is not going to work. If I were to execute this, see here it says add is not defined. So what gives? We know that this executed add.js, right? So an add.js has this function. So why can I not use that function? over here. The reason is, in node modules, every module is encapsulated by default. If you have a script that needs, you know, that prints console statements, well, it's going to execute it, right, which is what it did over here. This printed something to the console, it executes it. But any variables, any function declarations, any function definitions, they do not get carried over. Once this require is finished executing, those variables and functions and all that are not available in the context of this file, okay? Modules are encapsulated by default. All that this is doing is kind of like executing that file and then throwing away the context. It's throwing away all the variables and the namespacing that came with it. Not technically throwing away, but for the purposes of this file, that namespace doesn't exist anymore. From here on, that namespace doesn't exist anymore. That is there only in add.js. It's kind of automatically encapsulating anything that's going on in add.js. So this is the default behavior, but what if you want to actually access something that's in another file? This is actually a very common use case. Let's say you're building a big node application. You will have like hundreds of functions and hundreds of definitions. You want to put them all in one file. You want to actually split them out into multiple files. So if you have them in multiple files, you need a way for you to access those different functions when you need them, right? So you have to define a file and define a function in one file, and now you need to access that function in another file. You would like to just require it and then use that function, right? Well, this is not allowing it. How does it work? There is a way to make that work, and we'll check that out in the next tutorial. And the way to do that is by using exports. I'll tell you what exports are in the next tutorial, so we'll see you there.